Okay, welcome back to Freedom Crossing chapter number five. A surprise visit. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen? All right, let's see if you're right. What do you think? You think it's Joel, gonna be Joel's parents? Can, can we do a little recap from the last chapter? Okay, so what happened in the last chapter? So Martin made breakfast for them. What about Laura, did you say? Oh, so Laura, so Joel or uh, Bert showed Laura where the 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 hiding spot was in Laura's room because Laura couldn't find it. Um, then and um, yeah. So so what happened at the beginning was Laura saw a guy by the road following Joel. She got freaked out. She went and told Bert. Bert said, "Well, I'm not gonna go warn Joel now because then they'll know something bad's going on in the house, yeah. right?" So Laura was pretty upset. She went back to her room. She was, you know, tried to find the thing. She didn't find it the next morning. She hears a knock on the door. It's a burr, and Martin's made breakfast for everybody. They figured out where or how he's going to hide, right? And um, right at the end of the chapter, Martin said, Yes, miss, my pappy taught me I can write too, but spelling gives me some... Laura looked up, wondering why Martin didn't finish what he was saying. She saw that his eyes, wide with terror, were fixed on the window. Instantly, Laura guessed what had happened. He had seen someone outside. No one was in sight now, but a sharp knock sounded at the back door. All right. A surprise visit. For a few seconds, the three in the kitchen remained frozen. Then Martin, the first to move, wrenched open the cellar door and disappeared down the stairs. To Laura's relief, she saw that he had carried his plate with him. Bert cast a hasty glance around the room and called out, Just a minute! Laura wished she could hide, but no doubt their visitor had already seen her and would wonder why she had left. As for Martin, at least he had been the been farthest from the window and being black had been less noticeable. Of course, the person at the door might even be Joel Todd. This morning, she was willing to have him see her since she was wearing a starched blue house dress and her hair smoothly brushed, was pulled back and tied with a blue ribbon. Bert's eyes questioned her and she answered for the benefit of listening ears. I declare, Bert... You're the slowest moving boy. Who's Whoever's at that door will think we're still abed. She noticed too late that the cellar door was ajar, but she did not dare close it, for Bert was already drawing the bolt on the back door. A tall, spare, middle-aged woman with wispy gray hair stood at in the doorway. Laura recognized their nearest neighbor from a quarter of a mile up the road, did not know whether to be glad or sorry. She would have preferred Joel. But at least Mrs. Fitch was better than a slave catcher. Excuse me. Still, she did have a reputation for being a busybody. Reputation, thank you. What is a busybody, though? Busybody is. Think Mrs. Lind. Mrs. Lind was a busybody. Rumor starter or nosy. It's somebody who's super nosy. A busybody is into somebody else's business. Busybody. 
can you imagine having a busy so my neighbors will call sometimes and say hey so who was visiting you with the blah 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 colored truck the one time I planned a surprise for my mom and said hey who who was in that blah 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 truck and then my mom knew that somebody had come to while she was gone to Florida and did wood I was so bummed she's like yeah I picked up the messages and I figured it out why do you think I didn't tell her I didn't want her to know it was going to be a surprise and she blew her surprise what a frustrating thing that is Yep. Yep. Oh, my friend. Yep. We're on a call, and she sees me doing something. Like, this is not what it is. She was like, what are you doing? And, like, the weirdest voice. And I'll be like, thinking. She goes, oh, what are you thinking? And I feel like she's thinking. She goes, why? Yeah, so... I, like, I think a lot of times grandmas and grandpas are pretty, they don't really have much else to talk about, right? So they talk about you and they think about you and they worry about you. Um, so still, she did have a reputation for being a busybody. What does a reputation mean? Not so much a personality. Past. Not past. Um, like, um, like what you do in your life. Yeah, so it's what you're known as being. Yeah, known for. So, I have a reputation, if you know me well enough, you know that I like to, what? Crochet. 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 I like to give stuff to kids. Um, I have a reputation, what? I like reading. I like reading, yeah. So, reputation is what represents you. You like Crayola. I like Crayola. But, did you know that I liked Crayola until you came into my classroom? Probably not. Did you know that I liked crochet before you came into my classroom? No. Yeah. Probably, possibly. That was a possibility. Um, so, here we go. I I hope that's my reputation. That's much better than being a grump, right? I had a bit, yep, I had a big jug that I carried around, and then it fell off the roof and it cracked. Um, so good. Yeah, not the roof of the house, but I would put it on, like, the, the roof of the car when I got out of the car or whatever. You drove away. No, I didn't. It was oh. icy, and it went shh, oh. Yeah. I used to carry the big, I used to carry the big cup with a straw. And then I carried the big cup and I carried a little cup. Well, what happened with the little cups is kids went psh, psh, everywhere. Uh, when my dad always put, like, sometimes when we were at, like, our grandma's or something, mm -hmm. he would always put his drink on, like, maybe a coffee or something on the top of uh, the, on the uh, car roof or the truck roof. And mm -hmm. uh, so he drove away and, and then when it fell off, he just, like, rolled with that, and I started laughing, and it was so funny. My mom's put her purse on the roof of the car before. Oh. That wasn't funny. Because I need to go figure Wait, out where it left. My dad oh. also put her phone on top of the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad 
my old iPod got left on the roof of the car and they like hunted and hunted and hunted for it and eventually somebody messaged me through messenger because they'd found it they had an apple product they plugged it in they were able to pop it up and then they mailed it back to me it was so sweet yeah. all right moving on um Burr said with false heartiness good morning miss fitch come mrs fitch come in good morning Bert. morning laura You'd better pay attention to those griddle cakes. Laura ran to the stove where a curl of smoke was arising from the griddle. The pancakes were as black as the stove. She stacked them with the spatula and dumped them into the fire. Wasteful, commented Mrs. Fitch in her brisk voice. She set a small basket on the table. I brought you some biscuits. Thought I'd better see how you two young ones were getting along without your father and stepmother. We're doing all right, said Bert. Just fine, Laura. Just fine, Laura assured her, and thank you kindly for those biscuits. Can I fix you some pancakes? If you just saw somebody have black pancakes, would you want to eat their pancakes? No. Land sakes, no. I had breakfast over an hour ago. It's past 8 o'clock, you know. What could happen as soon as 7 or 8 o'clock? Just waking. No, what did they say yesterday? Could happen as soon as 7 or 8 o'clock. Right, so the slave hunters could get a search warrant as early as 7 or 8 o'clock, and now it's after 8 o'clock, okay? Good, good recall, my friend. Good recall. It's past 8 o'clock, you know. Her eyes were busy swooping over the entire room, lingering on the untidy stack of dishes beside the sink left from their middle-of-the-night meal. I won't hold you up, she said. You must be in a hurry to get on with your chores. She looked pointedly at Bert. I don't suppose you've taken care of the horse. Not yet, Bert admitted. What a pity Mrs. Fitch had to choo had chosen this morning to visit, thought Laura. It wasn't like Bert to neglect the horse, for he was fond of the lively young filly he had named Sally. Mrs. Fitch's expression showed clearly that this was just what she had expected. Humph, she said. You'd better hustle on. I know how particular your father is about having the animals fed and watered right on time, and I suspect he left you a few other jobs to do besides... No, nope. good try. Where is it at? Did I miss it? Oh, yep. Surveyed. So, page 41. 38. All right. Laura turned. Around. And. Surveyed. the kitchen what do you think surveyed means I or Yep, so surveyed, eyed, Look yep, analyzed, I used look around last year, looked around,
That's right, Bert replied. I have plenty to do to keep me busy all day and half the night. Still, Mrs. Fitch didn't go. I notice you haven't started school yet, Laura. Are you going back or do you think 15 is too old for school? I haven't decided yet, said Laura. Can, do you have a choice if you're 15 or do you have to go to school? Yes. You have to go to school. Uh, I believe I believe our age is 16, oh. not 15. Yeah, but I have a friend um, who dropped out at 15. Um, what you can tell me, is that he dropped out at um, middle school about when he was gone 15. My sister is 16 and she has a job. So she still goes to school about 15. Yeah. Is it wise to drop out? No. You have to, you really have to have at least a high school education. You can do a trade school after high school, but you really need at least a high school education. Because just about every, every job says, are, do you have a high school education? So you really have to have a high school education. Trade, trade school is more like um, plumbers or... Um, not janitors necessarily, but plumbers and um, those kinds of jobs, like fix-it jobs. A lot of times those are trade school jobs. Um, it would stink to be a plumber. It could be very stinky, I'm quite sure, to be a plumber. All right, here we go. I haven't decided yet, said Laura, when she had come north, she had expected to enroll at once. But she had come down with a bad cold the day after she arrived. As the days had passed, she had begun to dread going to a school that would be strange to her. After her long absence, she would know few of the other students. And now that she had her mind, now that she had made up her mind to return to Virginia, there didn't seem to be any reason to start classes here. At last, the door closed behind Mrs. Fitch, and Bert grinned with his relief. She'll be reporting to Pa what a poor farmer I am. Laura had other worries. By the way, she stayed around and stared at everything. I'm afraid she's suspicious. Do you think she'll go to the sheriff? She might. Bert ran his fingers through his hair in a worried gesture. But on the other hand, she's always interested in other people's business. business. He pulled up the door to the cellar. Come on up, he called. Martin bounded up the steps, smiling broadly. I was all ready for company, he said. I had the sack on. He looked at the stove. Sorry about those pancakes. I'll fix some more. Never mind, said Laura, unless you or Bert want more. No more for me, said Bert. I'm going out to look after Sally and the chickens. He paused with one hand on the latch. Martin, when I come in... We're going to look for another hiding spot for you. The cellar's the first place the slave hunters will go. But if I'm in the potato sack, they won't find me. They might. Some of those fellows have had a lot of practice hunting for fugitives. We have to hide you better. While Bert was caring for the livestock, Martin poured hot water into the wash tub and scrubbed his clothes. Laura went up to make her bed and straighten her room. She was sure that Bert wished she would offer to let Martin use the secret room, <clears throat> but she was not going to do that. If he wanted it, let him ask again. Before long, Bert returned from the barn, and Laura heard the two boys climb the back stairs and enter Bert's room. Had Bert locked the back door, she wondered? Rather than ask him, she went down to check, leaving her bedroom work half, half finished. The door was bolted, no doubt about it. Bert was more responsible than he used to be. Laura turned around and surveyed the kitchen. Martin's clothes were drying on the rack behind the stove. Dishes from breakfast and the night before littered the table and the workshelf. She wrinkled her nose in distaste at the dirty dishes. Oh well, she said to herself, I might as well get started. Bert was too, too busy getting Martin settled to think of kitchen work. And besides, he had the outside chores to do. Once again, she wished she were in Virginia. 
A housewife there was busy enough, heaven knew, with plenty, planning the meals and seeing to it that the slaves did what they were supposed to do. But at least she and Aunt Ruth hadn't had to clean up the kitchen. The people in the South had a different way of life. They had more time for music and books and parties. That sounds good, doesn't it? No. Just have a little bit of slaves and then you have more time for fun. No, yeah. No, yeah. Laura located the butter and milk down to, oh, carried the butter and milk down to the cellar. She soon located the place where they belonged, a box that was set into the cool dirt and flagstone floor. The box was only for the day's supply of perishable food, she recalled. Perishable. Um, I think I did the whole thing. I think it fits. If it doesn't fit, then do the best you can. It was page 42, correct. This box was only for the day's Supply of perishable food. Just a minute. She recalled. What do you think perishable means? Yeah, exactly. Could spoil or rot. So that would be like meat, milk, butter. Uh, bread has a fairly decent self shelf life. Yeah, it will mold, but it doesn't generally mold within a very short period of time. So perish means die. In this case, it would be, it would spoil or wouldn't be useful within a short period of time. All right. Yep. So, I mean, we're not going to have food that dies, but spoiling is really kind of food that's dying. Um, oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. This box was only for the day's supply of perishable food, she recalled. The big cans of milk and the crack of butter were stored outside in the spring house where cold running water kept them fresh. She climbed back to the kitchen, put the water on the stove to heat, and then began to scrape and stack the dishes. When her mother was alive, Laura had enjoyed helping in the kitchen. Now, doing the once familiar task, she found herself humming. I did, didn't I? Thank you. Uh, the font she uses is kind of wonky. So that's, that's, it does kind of look like crook, not crack. All right. Um, so the big cans... of milk and excuse me the crock c-r-o-c-k crock of butter were 
were, and we'll just do dot, 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 so you don't have to write the rest of it. What do you think a crack is? Uh, 42. Not a little compartment. You're yeah, you're on the right track. So a crack is pottery. No, it's like pottery. Well, crack a crack pot hat is is made kind of like of pottery. A crock a lot of times looks something like this. So, um, so a lot of times a crock is a big container. It's round. Um, so it's a big container. You store stuff in it. Um, and a lot of times it's you made out of pottery. So, so like pottery made? Is that pottery made out of what? Like pottery made? Okay, so now doing the once familiar task, she found herself humming. Where did Abby keep the dish pans? Laura wondered. Abby's her new stepmom, right? Oh. When she was startled to realize that this was the first time since she had come home that she had cleaned up, cleared up after a meal. Abby hadn't asked her to do a thing. Alone in the kitchen and busy with her hands, Laura shook off some of the gloom that had weighed her down since her arrival in the north. I can't imagine being shipped south for four years and then your dad gets remarried, you come back up north, and now you have a new stepmom you've never met before. That would be really hard, wouldn't it? Abby had been kind to her from the first. Funny, she had never been married before. She must be all of 30. Being warm-hearted and quite pretty, you'd have thought some man would have noticed her. Well, Pa had noticed. It was easy to see he thought she was perfect. She was, he was always making little jokes and laughing at her to catch her eye and watching her laugh. Oh, looking at her to catch her eye and watching her laugh. Abby made all of Pa's favorite dishes and Laura had seen her give him a quick kiss when he came in from the barn or the fields. Seeing them together and how happy they were made Laura feel more lonely than ever. She wondered how Abby felt about the Underground Railroad. Probably she was in favor of helping the slaves. She seemed to think her pa did, everything her pa did was just right. Laura found the dish pans on the bottom shelf of the cupboard and scooped soft soap from a crock into one of them. As she lifted the tea kettle from the stove, a distant sound made her pause. The dogs were howling again. They were still searching for Martin. Dun, 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 dun. Of course. Shh, I'm so sorry. I'm putting my bookmark in. Can I do that? Okay. You guys are getting really good at that. I'm just saying. Who? Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see. Who knocks at the door and interrupts breakfast? Explain the purpose of the visit. Hmm. Describe the chores Bert and Laura complete around the house. I think this is important, and I want you to think about it. Um, because I want you to think about what do you think the women did back in the day, and what do you think the jobs were the men did back in the day? Were they the same jobs, or were they different jobs? Uh, I want you to describe it. So tell me. So Bert, um, 
But you could say Bert and Laura both did different chores around the house. Bert's chores were where and what types, and then Laura's chores were where and what types. Um, number three, how does Laura feel about doing chores? You need to make sure, so I'm going to highlight describe, and then I'm going to highlight use text details to support your answer. And then I want to do number four. What startles Laura as she's working in the kitchen and why? So you have two, three, and four. Your, don't forget the why part because that's part of your question. So what startles her? Yes, and don't forget racist. Thank you for reminding me. And Anne, I had them all just labeled with races, and now I need to put them all on there. Make sure you use complete sentences. Any questions for me about jobs? Remember Martin and... Uh, Martin and Bert were up looking for a, a, a different hiding place for Martin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking like that because I thought they were outside because we heard No, Bert, Bert, Martin came in and they were looking for a different hiding place for Martin. Um, I don't know what questions we have to do. Question two, three, and four, honey. Two, three, and four. All right, good question. Anything else? Talk to you later. Bye.